we get so entangled with failure because we don't know our identity. We forget what God has told us to do. We forget the dream. We forget the vision. We forget everything as soon as failure comes. And you know why we forget, bro? Why is that? We forget because we keep pouring without being filled. Mm, that's good. We pour into what we're going after, and then when failure happens, we react mm-hmm. with our words instead of responding with our actions of what God has placed on the inside of us. Mm. All right, y'all. So, um, I'm going to kick it off. Yes, sir. I have a topic. Yes, sir. I have a topic or two. Um, <laughs> as you were talking, one thing that came to mind um, was how to fail. Mm-hmm. Like, that, that I feel like we talk about failure so much mm. um, in our society to where it's like what you were saying, like the, how you put it, the, was it the nine or seven? Mm-hmm. Six, fears. six six basic fears. I'm way off. Six basic fears. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> and I just think about, you know, failing as being one of them because I think all of us are like afraid, have fear of failure. Mm-hmm. Now there's millionaires, there's people that you'll hear, self help coaches and things like that. They'll say, like, oh, you know, I'm not afraid of failure. That's because they they failed and they've already been past it. Correct. But for those who um are either in a season of failing or in a process of failing or have never failed and just scared about, you know, the other side and all those other things. It just makes me think about, you know, how we as people have to go through seasons of failure. And just like you were saying, to grow in order to learn, to, to, to master ourselves. Mm-hmm. Um, and even like thinking about like myself, like there have been times when I've failed so many times. And I think the most frustrating part about failure to me is that you kind of lose control of the situation Mm -hmm. at times. And I think that is something that we want to be able to be in control of things. We want to be able to have control. Correct. Correct. And when we lose control, we don't have control. And failure starts to hit and it starts to happen. We're like, oh, God, what's next? Correct. And it's like, okay, well, I can't take another thing. I can't take this. I can't take that. And it just makes me think about, you know, the seasons when I failed and when I really, you know, really missed it. Mm -hmm. And then that redeeming part that comes after when you fail, Mm -hmm. because a lot of people, I don't think they know how to fail properly Mm -hmm. (laughs) because there's a lesson that you learn in failing. Exactly. And I think a lot of people, they'll just fail. And it's just like it goes back to your 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 questions like with our generation. Why? Do we, you know, lack knowledge or we have knowledge, but we lack understanding because we we're so afraid of failure. Correct. We don't know how to fail. Correct. We don't know how to fail when it comes to having full knowledge and understanding of Correct. whatever it is. Yes, sir. Even in the church. Yes, like sir. we're so afraid of failing in church that we will, like you said, put up a mask and pretend that everything is all right mm-hmm. because we don't want to be seen as oh you're a failure yes sir you didn't get this right you didn't do that right yes sir and especially in the black church because we you know we over yes, we sir. overanalyze <laughs> we overhype everything bro you going viral if you, yeah <laughs> if you mess up in the right, church right. for real but that's just like but the thing is like you have to know how to fail and there is a lesson in failing I agree I think what if people understood. The benefit, like you're stating, of failure. Mm -hmm. There is always, in people of God, remember, I always say that, but here we go. (laughs) Remember, there is always a seed in failure. Mm -hmm. The seed of failure, if you pay attention to it and how you fail, instead of, because what happens is, bro, the emo- we we focus on the emotion of failure instead mm. of the seed of it. Mm, that's good. The emotion clutters our our thought process. Mm-hmm. The emotion uh, uh, puts us in a space where we become de- self defeated. Mm-hmm. When God is saying, "No, son, there is a seed." In that failure, there is something that I'm trying to show you. There is something that I'm trying to pull out of you. Yeah. 
if you pay attention to it. And what happens is we, we get so close to it. We get so close to it. And then the moment we get close to it, we become Mm self-defeated. But I believe, and I'm speaking prophetically, bro, and I don't say that often. Yeah. Um, but I believe that God is putting those who really have a heart for him yeah. in situations where you can't retreat mm-hmm. because we we're because we are the generation that is at hand mm-hmm. and we have the power to do it. If we're going to be able to do what the Peters and the Davids and the, and the Joseph um, Joshua's and Joseph's and all these people were able to do, mm-hmm. you have to think about it. Joseph was not, he had no way of retreating. Yeah. And in fact, because we look at it as, hey, if Joseph didn't tell his dream, he wouldn't be put in that situation. But you know what? I'm glad his ignorance mm-hmm. made him tell the dream because then it wouldn't begin the process. Right. And sometimes God has to put us because if certain things are ordained for our lives and we're praying for certain things, mm-hmm. then in turn, sometimes God has to put us in situations where now, now you have to work. You're going to have to work through this. Yeah. I need you to feel what it's like to be betrayed by your brothers. Yeah. Thrown in the pit. Mm-hmm. Then I need you to be, feel what it's going to feel like to be set up. Mm-hmm. Oh my God. Yeah. Woo. <laughs> I need you to feel all that. Yep. Then I need you to wait more. Mm-hmm. But everywhere Joseph went, I'm trying to watch your tone. No, keep going. Keep going. <laughs> everywhere Joseph went, he was prosperous. He was prosperous. So it had nothing to do with him, his self mastery. Yeah. It was just him having to wait the process out. Mm-hmm. Because eventually, if you master self, yeah. Which Joseph did. He had. He was good at math. He mm-hmm. understood. This is what you're going to have to do. You're going to mm-hmm. have to save mm-hmm. seven years of your plenty mm-hmm. in order to, and this amount in order to be prosperous when you don't have it. Yeah. You have to. So he had a mindset. He had a skill yeah. to interpret dreams. Everything yep. was a setup. Yep. He had a, a, a skill to interpret dreams. And then he had a skill of math. He had a skill with people. He mm-hmm. knew how to, because he did it with Potiphar's house. Yep. He was able to put people in place. He, mm-hmm. he knew how to run things. He mm-hmm. was good with management. Mm-hmm. That came with having an understanding. And he was fearless. Yeah. He wasn't, a, because he, he, and it's amazing because I can only imagine being 17, 18 years old, however old he was, being in those position mm-hmm. and, you really not having a choice, you know, and you're, you're after, first of all, after my brothers sold me. Yeah. That, that'll suck life out of you. Yeah. And he could have went anywhere. He could have done anything after that moment. He could have had self pity in mm-hmm. that moment, bro. Mm-hmm. But he used it for his good. Mm-hmm. That takes courage. That takes courage, bro. I mean, that takes a level of courage that people ain't built with no more. Yeah. Because my brother sold me, yo. Mm-hmm. Y'all, that's how y'all feel? Mm-hmm. Because of what? Yeah. Because of a dream? Mm-hmm. Oh, it's deep. It's deep. It's deep, bro. <laughs> it's deep. It's deep. It's deep. This is why I say it goes deep. Because... I've been I've been studying Joseph, Joseph for the past like what couple well this past week honestly, mm-hmm. and this is the thing that I I pulled out of that story is that first of all, <laughs> Jacob pissed me off so much mm-hmm. in, this, in, this <laughs> in this Bible, and it and it wasn't because of like of it was mainly because of how he managed his 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 family sure. There are so much there's so much in 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 this story of Jacob and Joseph mm-hmm. and his brothers mm-hmm. that you can literally you can we can preach a whole series yes, on sir. how the mismanagement of spiritual fathers mm. and the mismanagement of fathers in your life. Mm. The problem the thing that that pissed me off so much about Jacob was when his daughter was raped. Mm. When when his daughter was raped, his response to that was you my image matters more than the fact that my daughter has just gotten raped. Mm. And he was so upset with his sons for going for their response and how they made him look in this town. Then 
having righteous anger or having some kind of passion for his daughter who had just got raped. Mm-hmm. And the dude is crazy. Tell me, I want to marry your daughter. I give you everything I got. And you, you don't feel some type of way. Mm-hmm. Why? Mm-hmm. Why is that? Mm-hmm. Well, let's back all the way up. Mm-hmm. What, 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 what caused Joe Jacob to have this type of attitude towards his kids? Mm-hmm. It's because he didn't love, he didn't love Leah mm-hmm. as much as he loved Rachel. Mm-hmm. So all the women that he had children with, all of Joseph's brothers, they all came through women that he did not love. Mm -hmm. And because of that relationship aspect, that love that he had towards them, Mm -hmm. it matriculated in how he dealt and how he managed his his family. Mm -hmm. So, like, the sons, they all saw Mm -hmm. because they knew that Jacob loved Rachel more than anything. Mm -hmm. And so the babies that Rachel had... The type of love that he had for Rachel mm-hmm. was different mm-hmm. than the love that he had for his uh, his other sons. Yeah, and that's why you see that the the Jacob Joseph's brothers hated him so much more mm-hmm. because of that root from his father, mm-hmm. all the way back to when he was at Laban's house mm-hmm. trying to marry Rachel, mm-hmm. and he tricked him and put Leah in the bed. Yeah. It stemmed from that. Yeah. And it and it just goes to show, like, who was calling me? That's my ringtone. My name is TJ. I love the Lord. I still do. <laughs> <laughs> but it just shows, like, how talk, with Joseph, he was given an unfair advantage from the beginning. For sure. Because of how his father loved him more than he loved his brothers and sisters. And it's just so funny because it's like when you read the story of Joseph and you see how he was set up and all these different things, it was in him from the beginning. Mm-hmm. Joseph knew how to fail because of how his brothers treated him. Mm-hmm. He knew how to prosper. Therese, not right now. <laughs> <laughs> he knew how to prosper uh-huh. and he knew how to fail because of the fact that he had gone through it with his brothers. He had gone through it. For a while uh-huh. with them. And so with them selling him off, you know, of course he would feel some type of way. Of course he'll be pissed. Of course he'll be he'll be sad and upset. But I love like at the end when 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 they all come to him because he shared the dream and the dream was prophetic of what he was going to be doing in the future. Mm-hmm. When they needed something, when they needed food and needed rations, they came to him. The thing that he said the most is like what you said earlier, it said, You intended to harm me, but God meant it for my good. Mm-hmm. And it's like every time that we think about failure in that in that moment and things like that, failure is intended to harm us. Yes. Mm -hmm. Failure is intended to bring us pain. Failure is intended to allow us to see ourselves Mm -hmm. in the mirror. But the other side of failure is, is that it teaches us what did we learn from this failure? Correct. What did Joseph learn every time that he was facing a failing situation? Come on, talk. He had what the biggest thing that he he learned was that he had favor with God, man, which was key. Yeah, because good, of the bro. fact that he had favor with God, that's, that's why good. he was able to have favor with the with the prison guards. That's why he was able to have favor with different ones. And even though he 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 interpreted that man's dream and he forgot about it. It came up at the right time when Pharaoh needed somebody to take over this next phase of life. Come on. So it just goes to show, like, you know, sometimes, like, how we talked about this before, how your name being brought up and your gift will make room for you. That's why. Because of what he did for this one guy that he had favor with in the jail a long time ago. So it's like, so what else did Joseph learn while he was, while, you know, Failing or we we see those situations Failing situations he saw that You know because God's hand is on him Mm -hmm. He didn't see it as a As a negative he saw it as a positive Because it all led to him Becoming the What the number two guy in Egypt Come on he was like the second Most wealthiest guy behind who Pharaoh (sighs) and because of that At 30 at 30 (laughs) At 30 Married a fine wife Come on here (laughs) Had a whole bunch of babies At 30 Come on man Had access to everything At 30 Why? Because of God's favor Mm -hmm. And he did not allow His situations His failures To to overtake that 
He didn't allow that. He didn't allow his failure to get in front of his dream in front of what God has already told him was going to happen. And a lot of times the reason why we get so in, engulfed or we get, sorry, we get so swallowed up <laughs> swallowed in <up>. failure. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever been swallowed <laughs> up? <laughs> sorry, y'all. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> we love you, man. Love you. <laughs> but it's like we get so entangled with failure because we don't know our identity. We forget what God has told us to do. We forget the dream. We forget the vision. We forget everything as soon as failure comes. And you know why we forget, bro? Why is that? We forget because we keep pouring without being filled. Mm, that's good. We pour into what we're going after. And then when failure happens, we react mm-hmm. with our words instead of responding with our actions of what God has placed on the inside of us. Mm. He puts things, he has put something on the inside of us, but we have to keep going to the fountain. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. We have to keep going to the fountain to be in field. So what, it, what does it tell us? And uh, what's the book? Um, Joshua one and eight mm-hmm. meditate on the word day mm-hmm. and night. Mm hmm. Because meditation for the world is different from meditation for the Christian. Mm-hmm. And when it comes to meditation of the world, and I learned this from my, my, my pastor. I got to give him credit where credit is due. But meditation, when it comes to the world, they tell you to empty yourself out. Yep. Mm-hmm. But when it comes to us being a Christian, mm-hmm. we have to meditate on the word, which fills us. Mm-hmm. It fuels who we are in order for us to so. This is why this is what I was talking about earlier. In order to be able to handle failure the way we need to, there is a certain discipline that I have to have. What is my discipline? So my discipline, I have a certain I have a specific time every morning mm-hmm. that regardless, I get up. Mm-hmm. Regardless of where I am, I get up. Mm-hmm. And you don't now after my rebirth, mm-hmm. I don't have to. Nobody has to force me to do it. Mm-hmm. It's on automatic. Yeah. To the point where I'm like, man, I've been fighting to do this all along. All it took was that experience mm. for me to get to this place of yeah. discipline. So now when failure comes, now that I, f- I face different obstacles, yeah. now when people are kicking at the pricks or, or people are judging me or whatever, mm-hmm. it's not bothering me now because I'm constantly, I'm prepared for mm-hmm. what failure looks like. Mm-hmm. Right. I'm prepared. Jo- uh, Joseph had a decision to make. Yeah. He was either going to every situation, like you said, he was either going to let it get the best of him Mm -hmm. and he could have, he could have pitied himself. He could have did anything he wanted. He could have killed himself. He could have did so many different, he had so many different options, Mm -hmm. but the favor of God was too strong. It's favor over fear all day. All day. Favor will always annihilate um, any type of fear, if you know who you are in God, so then that leads the question, do you know who you are in God? Mm. Who are you yeah. in God? Yeah. Do you have that relationship? Do you know him well enough? Because if we know our creator, if we know the maker well enough, mm-hmm. and if we know what he promised, the, the scripture says Abraham simply believed mm-hmm. and was counted to him as righteousness. Mm-hmm. He just had a belief. Mm-hmm. God, you said it. Okay. Mm-hmm. You say I'm going to have children. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. (laughs) I'm 90 something years old. Okay. Okay. All right. How is this going? How how am I going to get this business up? Okay. Mm -hmm. How is my my, my podcast going to go viral? Okay. You saying it's going to go viral. Okay. Mm -hmm. If this is what you call, if you saying I need to preach. Okay. Right. If you saying that I need to build certain things for certain people, I'm going to do it. Okay. The problem is we're not feeling ourselves. With what is necessary yep. in order to be like, okay, faith come by hearing, mm-hmm. hearing the word of God. Mm-hmm. So at the end of the day, bro, I think in order to, unlike you said, and like we're talking about how we got this topic, you know, understanding the benefit of failure. Yeah. Understanding the, what's in the seed of failure. Yeah. And not being afraid to lose. Yeah. Yeah. I think most of us were afraid to lose and because we're afraid to lose, we won't step out. Mm. Yeah. We like the fact that we know our check is coming every two weeks. Yep. Mm-hmm. 
We Level know, security. and it's like it's that that, con- that control mindset. We are creatures of habit, and we have this thing where we want to control everything. But God says, "Keep your mind stayed on Me, yep. and I'll keep you in perfect peace." Yep. So that way, so that way, when things happen, or if you're going after things, I can give you the peace you need. Mm-hmm. Because, and that's the thing. Here, here we go. I'm going in even deeper. So then, that tells me that there is a laziness about us because yep. we have to constantly stay focused mm-hmm. on Him. Yeah, we have to constantly go after Him. Mm-hmm. And if we don't constantly go after Him, then we take matters into our oh, own hands. Yep. And then we're trying to control the situation mm-hmm. again. And now here we are in this cycle again. Mm-hmm. We're not able to handle the failure that just happened. Yep, bro. <laughs> it's deep. No, that's real. It's it's so real because it's like we have we have to understand <laughs> how to fail properly. Yes, sir. Really, honestly and truthfully. Yes, and that's, sir. Uh, that's center back on what we we're talking about. As you was talking, like I was just thinking, like there's there's two things I wrote down. You said something earlier. You said we have to learn how to have a place of retreat. The thing that that stood out to me the most about David and his failure was that David is known as being what a man after God's own heart. Absolutely, that's that's David's calling card. The thing that we tend to forget is that whenever David David was faced with situations where he felt failure was about to come, where he was about to feel defeat or anything like that, what did he do? He prayed. That's it. It's all, it's all through Psalms. Like all the Psalms, most majority of the Psalms are songs, but the majority of them are like are prayers. Ooh. And the thing that that stood out to me the most is I can't name the song right now, but it's he said this, and this is one of my life songs. He said, "Your word have I hid in my heart, so that I might not sin against Come it." On, Just like she was saying, like we have to be filled. We have to be filled with the word that is so deeply rooted in our heart that we know. Okay, if failure comes. If if something happens, Come on, the bro. word of God is in me, and that's going to keep me. Right, that's going to keep me from falling. It's going to keep me from failing, or at least failing to the max. Come on, it's going to keep me from sinning because I know what the word says. Come I on. know what God is saying, and it, and it just makes me think about too. Uh, and I'm gonna share a story, but I'll let you say your point first, and I'll mm-hmm. say my story. But it just makes me think about you know all the times when I failed before. And how and the lessons that I've learned from failure. Mm-hmm. So before I jump into that, I'll let you. So I don't you, nah, nah, you good, bro. <laughs> I, saw, I saw the creativity. It just, it just, it just <laughs> built up in me. This is what we do. <laughs> but what came to mind is there is always enemy. There is always an enemy. Yep. Whether there is a person or it's a certain thing standing in your way. Yeah. So the psalm that came to mind is. And I need y'all to have a broad perspective. This is just not about people. Psalm 27, where David says, when the wicked, even my enemies and my foes came upon me to eat at my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Though a host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Mm-hmm. Though war should rise against me, this will I be confident. One thing I have desired of the Lord that I will seek after. Do y'all hear what he's saying? If you if you hear what he's saying, every time there is a fear, every time something is coming against him, mm-hmm. he said, I'm going to continue to seek, seek after, after God. Mm-hmm. I'm going to continue to go after him because, whoo, thank you, Jesus. Because one thing that people can't take away is your drive after God. That's good. One thing people can't stop is you going after God mm-hmm. because that's between you and you. Mm-hmm. And if anybody comes in between that, you're in trouble. You're in trouble. If anything comes in between that, you're in trouble. Everything that is trying to get you away from God is a sin. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I need you to think on a broad perspective. It's not just what, what we say in the church and certain things that we point out. Anything that takes you away from the hunger of God, because you got to think about, like you were saying about David and his family, God had gave David a choice. Yep. He says, either I can deal with you, your enemies mm-hmm. can do something. Mm-hmm. And it was one more thing. But and David said, I would rather put my life in your hands. Yep. 
than allow my enemies mm-hmm. to do anything. And that's when all of this and his family begin to transpire. And he had to continue to overcome warfare. Yep. yep. Over and over again, even though his his choice because it was with what happened was for those that don't know the story is that he got somebody killed after getting his her wife Uriah's wife pregnant yeah. Bathsheba. We know we know his son all that, but after that, if you look at his life, his family was affected. Yeah, and he had to constantly constantly overcome war, mm-hmm. and that's not easy. But that's what makes him. As great as he is, that's why his name is great. He yeah. wasn't perfect, yeah, but he never gave up. Yeah, woo. All right, mm. Mm. That's, good. That's, <laughs> good. that's good. He never gave up. I mean, and, and the thing is that David learned in his failure, yes, sir, that his hiding place was who God. God. That's it, bro. And that's what we have to learn with failure. God will sometimes will lead you to a place to where you will fail, so that you can fall on your face and find Him. And the thing about failure is that you Ooh. have to understand that you need God more mm. than anything Man. in this world. He will strip everything from you. Trust me, I know. He stripped everything from me Man. and made me get to a place where all I had to do was just cry out to him, and he restored me. And, it, and it's like when we realize that, like, your failure is, is wrapped in God, yes. Mm. But you find your place in God mm. when you fail. And when you feel right. Oh, man, that's good, TJ. And so it's like I think that's about good, like I, I've talked about this before in 2019. A lot of things that has transpired <laughs> um, since then. But like the season that I was in prior to 2019, I was in a church for over a decade. Like and I learned so much mm-hmm. in this church. I I cannot I cannot say anything negative. Sure. About my time. From 2009 to 2019, mm-hmm. because there were so many great things that took place. Sure. I felt like God has given me a rooted foundation yes, sir. for me being at this church from 2009 to 2019. Like, I would not be the person that I am today if it wasn't for me being at this church. Mm-hmm. And so I'm giving honor where honor is due Absolutely. because that's exactly <laughs> what it is. It's like now, everything that transpired after that. There was a lesson that was learned Absolutely. from that. Absolutely. <clears throat> maturity. But maturity. maturity, right. But from that time period, it's like, how do you think I know how to, to, to dissect the word of God? Come on, man. During my time there, like, how mm-hmm. do you think I know how to get into the word and, and know what, 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 what all these different precepts and things? It's from my time there. Come on, bro. And so it's like, if I was so ignorant and so stupid and foolish to just be so hurt by what happened in 2019... That I neglect all of the good that came from 2009 until until then, I would be foolish. Yes, sir. I would be so unwise. But my failure came in 2019 when I (laughs) honestly took my eye off the prize Mm -hmm. and got lazy, got complacent, and got comfortable. And that's when you when you get comfortable is when you start to fail, and when you start to go down. Situations after situations happen, and, and and it's like the biggest thing that happened, and it came to a head to where I had to have a conversation with my pastor. Mm. And so it was me and my wife, we had a conversation with our pastor. And the thing that I apologized to him for in that moment was that I said, Bishop, I apologize because I should have came to you sooner. Mm. But I didn't mm. because I was so hurt, because mm. I was this. I, I should have came to you sooner. Mm. And said, this is what made me mad. This is what upset me. X, Y, and Z. But because of that, it led to a series of events. Backed by also me not listening to God. And because of that, 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 that failure came. And that instance happened. And it, and it drew, and it, I would say it, 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 it fueled a passion in me like nothing before. To where I had no other choice but to like, okay, God. I'm just giving it all to you, bro. Cause during that season, we had moved to Charlotte. I lost the job that we didn't get. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that we moved to Charlotte for. We sold our house. <laughs> we wild. sold everything. Car got repossessed. This is like I'm looking at me and my wife. We looking at each other. We crying like mm-hmm. like tears right. streaming down You're our right. face. And I, I was on a pod. I was not a podcast, but I was on a, um, a Bible study with, with some pastor friends of mine. And she said, "Like you and your wife, you're bonded by you're, you're bonded by. So we're bonded by God because of." 
those situations that we've been through. Mm -hmm. It's like it, it drew us closer together, but it also drew us closer to God. Because during that time, we had nobody to lean on but each other and God. Come on, Doc. <laughs> Come on. And so it's like when you go through the season of failure, what did I learn out of it? For one, I can't get comfortable. Man. I can't get lazy. I can't Come get on. complacent. Two, I have to stay in this word. Man. Three, I have to listen. This is the this is actually number one. I have to listen and obey God. But when he tell me to do something, if he says your season is up, it's time for you to go. Guess what? I, it's time for me to go, bro. It's time for me to let it go. And the problem is, is that we'll we'll hold on to something, thinking that okay, this is God wanting us to hold on to it. No, if he told you to let it go, let it go. Leave it. <laughs> it's and, and it's so funny because it it ties to um, a story I literally just shared that Bishop um, that Bishop Younger just posted. He said that this is you said your pastor says the year of the open door. He said this is the year of the closed door, mm -hmm. and he says the year of the closed door because he was like when he he was like he didn't want to go around and tell people that this is the year of the closed door because nobody want to hear that. Mm -hmm. He was like, but this is the thing when you get he was like it, God had to remind him of a season that he was in, mm -hmm. and basically he was at this place. And and he had went through this door mm -hmm. and he tried to open the other door and then he heard this voice that said, uh, Bishop Younger, you cannot go through this door unless you close that door first. Mm -hmm. And it just made me think about like and that's when the church went up, of course, because it just made me think about the fact that we have to close doors. We have to close ties. We have to sever ties with certain things in order to go to the next. It's like if we're not able to shut that thing off and, and, and completely sever ourselves from it. Then how can we go into the next season that God has for us? How can we open go into that next open door if we haven't closed that door off in the first place? If we haven't closed that door to sin, if we haven't closed that door to failure, if we haven't closed that door to unsuccess, how can we go to another place in success or another place in God if we haven't first dealt with that closed door first? If we haven't closed and shut that door completely first? I'm going to tell you why. People don't want to close the door behind them. Mm. It's because they continue to blame their frustrations on other people. On other people. And other things. And other things, yeah. And they keep allowing what was mm -hmm. to continue to be in their present. Yeah. It's one thing that That's I understand good. is that we have to be able to learn from our past. Mm -hmm. We have to be able to focus on our future. Mm-hmm. Because if we remain in the present, we'll stay stuck. Yeah. So I learn, I understand that, and even when it comes to a broad, broader perspective, when it comes to past events, we need to understand what did they do, what type of cycles mm -hmm. were they running in that is still happening today. Mm -hmm. And then we have to understand what's in the future, what, what do we have from the things that God has opened up for us and we continue to get frustrated about where we are instead of buckling down yeah. and saying, okay, this is what I'm going to, and not talking about what I'm going to do different. Mm -hmm. Cause you know, what's Actually starting to get frustrated with mm -hmm. me is when people get say, you know, this is what I'm getting ready to do and mm -hmm. I'm getting ready. Okay. Cause now, now my attitude is okay. Mm -hmm. Because if you're going to do it, I'll see it. Yeah. You'll if you're fruit of it. if you're not going to do it, then okay, then you're talking because and, and a lot of times what I recognize, bro, a lot of times and we're going back in this circle. Uh, the reason why people talk about it because they don't have the faith to do it. Mm. <laughs> That's true. So it's 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 easy to sound good. Mm -hmm. It's easy to write it out all the time. But now let's let's be about what he what which God say. Let's be about that action. I'm right. about that action, bro. You know what I mean? Uh, Marshawn Lynch, he was like, you know, he said, I'm about that action. Mm -hmm. That's all I got. Mm -hmm. I'm just here so I don't get fined. Mm -hmm. That joker was about action. <laughs> you feel what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, at the end of the day, it's like we have more power. And it's, it's mind boggling that people of the world get it before the body of Christ. Mm. And they get it. They get it. They understand. Because they're, they're tired of suffering. Yeah. We're tired of suffering until we get to church. Mm. Until we can shout it out. Until we can shout it out. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. Yeah. Or we'll walk it out. Glory <laughs> <God>. <laughs> you petty. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, yeah, we're, we're emotionally driven. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We're emotionally driven. And now. It's a mess. I, I, yeah. Now I'm at a point. So now me. It starts with me. I have to get to a point where I'm showing you. 
mm-hmm. know, this is what I'm doing. Yeah. I'm quieter. Mm-hmm. I don't got to post as much. Mm-hmm. I don't got to do as much mm-hmm. now right now because I'm in a season of my life where I'm going to show you better than I can tell you. Yeah. Because I'm tired. Yeah. I'm tired of going through the same old, same old. Mm-hmm. No, I got a game plan. Mm-hmm. And I know the enemy's coming because I got a game plan. So he's going to do things. But I'm, I'm, I'm way ahead of him mm-hmm. because now my focus is on God. Mm-hmm. He's, he's the only thing that is going to get me through these moments, through these, these tough times, the, through everything that I am f- at facing now, I am okay with discomfort. Yeah, I I love adversity mm-hmm. because anywhere there's adversity, you're showing me okay, there is a weak area in my mm-hmm. life. Yep. So now I got to get stronger in that area. Mm-hmm. So now, as I constantly build me, as I constantly grow, the less the more I look at fear and like okay, let's go. Yeah. When I don't want to do something. I do it. Yeah. Because at that mo- moment, laziness is trying to grip trying me. To st- mm-hmm. It's trying to settle in. So you never, you never put off what you can do in that moment. Yeah. So it's all, it's all boiling down. All of these people, the Davids, the Josephs of this, uh, of the word of God, that if you look at their character, if we pay attention to who they were mm-hmm. and their ability not to give up, it, it, it really makes, A world of difference, bro. A whole world of difference. Yeah, man.